three, four, five, six. I never thought that Gabe Vincent, Caleb Martin, and Duncan Robinson would outplay Brogdon, Smart, Holford, and Williams. No I, question. I, How much trouble are the Celtics in right now? <laughs> <laughs> They're in a lot of trouble, Ernie. If you go back to that night against Chicago in the play-in, did you think then that something like this would be possible? Damn right. The grind, the gyration, and the two. Pause the video right now, because this, this is something that I will never be able to fully comprehend what I just witnessed. Now sure, while there are many different areas that some of you would like to point to as to why the series currently sits in the absolutely improbable manner that it does, but my god you guys, I mean, when are we going to realize that you don't need to poke the bear, especially in that situation? And when you do actually poke the bear for absolutely no reason, it feels like nine times out of ten, it's gonna end like this. Shot clock at four. Here he accelerates and finds two. Butler drives Andrea Williams in a 15 footer will tap the defensive assignment. Butler works inside for the lead. Yeah. Miami has won and gone up two games to none. Who would have believed? Yeah, I genuinely still can't believe this actually happened. But if this is relatively the only part of this series that you've seen up to this point, the antics of Grant Williams are definitely not the end-all be-all as to why the Heat are really taking complete control of this series. Because that is instead due to some of the ridiculous things that we are consistently seeing them pull off on the basketball court. But if you guys are enjoying the playoff basketball as much as I am, don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications to never miss another NBA video down the entire stretch of the postseason. Okay, so to get back on topic with the Miami Heat, and more particularly the ridiculous Cinderella run that they somehow continue to extend game by game, it's just funny to me because even though the term I just used is really all people want to associate with Miami when we're talking about how they've actually made it this far in the postseason, but just maybe considering the fact that they are now two games away from an NBA Finals appearance, we can finally stop coining this as a quote-unquote fluke or a lucky run, and instead, I mean, just give them the credit where it's due. Because obviously, while I'm not going to go as far to say that a roster like the Miami Heat are presenting with, may I remind you, nine undrafted players is neither more skilled or talented than what Boston has. And I know while some of the numbers and performances that we're seeing from guys like Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, Duncan Robinson, or even Caleb Martin might deceive you of that, in reality, it's more so about the brilliance that we're seeing from both Jimmy Butler and and Eric Spolstra about how they initiate their offense with what's given in front of them. Now it seems at least so far in this series that when you're looking at their situation and you're thinking almost solely on matchup considerations, Eric Spolstra has very typically liked to throw out a starting five consisting of Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, Jimmy Butler, Kevin Love, and Bam Adebayo. And sure, while you would assume a combination like this is what most of their offense would tend to run through, I instead want to talk about the very interesting, essentially four guard, one big combo that we've seen Eric Eric Spolstra constantly used this postseason. And I know while some of the guys I'm classifying as guards was saying this, and guys like Caleb Martin and Duncan Robinson aren't technically backcourt players, I at least just hope you understand what I'm going to get at, because this is causing absolute hell for the Celtics defense. Because with so frequently doing this so far in this series, it's clear that Spolstra is trying to force Boston away from their too big approach and playing both Al Horford and Robert Williams. And because of this, it is very clear clearly allowed both Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo to thrive. For example, as we've seen so many times already in this series when they try to call out a high pick and roll situation, the Celtics seem to have very limited options in this scenario. Because A, either it forces Boston to initiate drop coverage and force Miami to beat them on mid-range shots, which I mean, based on the regular season stats from Miami, you wouldn't say that's a half bad idea. But so far this postseason, they have been otherworldly in this regard and Boston is seeing that firsthand. But then, even if Boston is considering trying to switch or hedge the screen when they do this, the versatility that Bam Adebayo has been showing in these situations is honestly to a degree that I didn't even expect to see in this series. But hey, with the impact that he's shown so far, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And possibly the biggest reason out of all of this as to why we're seeing the too big approach from Boston less and less as we go on is probably almost solely due to the step-back mid-range shot that Jimmy Butler 
Butler never seems to miss. But also, there is much more to the success that we're seeing from these guys than just specifically how they use these two. Because another one of the biggest ways in which Eric Spolstra is constantly having his guys abuse the faults of Boston's defense, or honestly, really any defense that they've met up to this point, has been both through finding and exploiting mismatches. Because again, to get back into the use of that 4-1 combo rotation, while one of the biggest staples of this offense continues to be the unpredictability in terms of, say, who is going to be the third star to step up on any given night, the use of Caleb Martin, both in this entire series and in this rotational situation is quite literally the shining example of what Miami Heat basketball is. I mean, Eric Spolstra is using a 6'5", 205-pound Caleb Martin as the four in some of his rotations, and it's almost hilarious to see some of the problems that it causes. I mean, as we can see in most of these situations, while his initial primary defender tended to be either Grant Williams or even Robert Williams, whether it was his ability to force them to continue test his outside shooting, maybe finding different opportunities through off-ball movements, or even just his outside presence clearing the lane more for some of his teammates to score, Caleb Martin has very arguably been the third best player on a championship caliber team. Now try telling me with a straight face you were saying that in the preseason. But it's not even just the fact that they have so many guys that can step up and be the guy on any given night, but it's also amazing to watch how drastically both their offensive and even defensive approaches will change change, almost completely depending on who has the hot hand. And for example of this, let's look no further than both Duncan Robinson and Kevin Love. Because while both of these guys still definitely have the ability to catch fire on any given night on one side of the ball, that is really the only reason they'll actually stay in the game due to their lack of a defensive presence on the other side of the ball. But even despite them being a liability in this regard, go figure because Eric Spolstra turned it into a positive. And he did so by wrecking the pass pattern of the Boston Celtics offense with constantly switching between man and zone to make up for those weak points. I mean, if you held one of the best offenses in all of basketball this year to just three field goals in the final eight minutes of the fourth quarter, and to make it even worse with all three of those field goals coming from the guy who poked the bear, clearly, if you somehow haven't caught on yet, Eric Spolstra is doing something right here. But even with the countless number of ways in which we've seen the Miami Heat out do their opponents so far, the question obviously still remains, will all of this end up being enough to push this team to another NBA Finals appearance? Well, as always, we'll just have to wait and see. Nonetheless though, you guys, I'm obviously extremely curious to hear what you all have to think about the Miami Heat situation in this series so far, so please be sure to let me know in the comments what has been the most surprising part that you've seen from this team up to this point, and on top of that, what do you expect to see from them going forward. But also, I just wanted to say thank you so much to each and every one of you out there for watching. I appreciate you all more than anything. You all know this, and I will see you guys in the next video.